Hey friends, this is a special episode of Conversations with Christians Engaged. And you know what? I'm just going to talk to myself. It's a conversation, right? Can't I talk to myself? Don't you talk to yourself? Well, whatever. Um, This is Bunny Pounds, the president of Christians Engaged. And we're going to talk today about the Wake Up Conference. I'm going to talk specifically about our national conference in Texas, September 23rd and 24th. Um, This is a national conference that we started creating last year that, Lord willing, we're going to do every year. Um, I'm also going to reference a little bit. We are doing a smaller conference in Pennsylvania, in York, Pennsylvania, October 14 and 15. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But I want to lay out for you, spend a few minutes with me. I'm going to go through the line by line agenda of this conference. I'm going to talk to you about the vision of it, why we're doing it. And why you absolutely should come and bring all your family and friends. Because there's nothing else like it. You know, our message and our vision and everything that we do for Christians Engage is around three words. Pray, vote, and engage. Pray, vote, and engage. Well, this conference, the Christians Engage conference, we we put this little tagline to it last year. Wake up. It's time for the body of Christ to wake up. I don't care if you're Protestant, Catholic, Pentecostal, Church of Christ, non-denominational, Baptist, Cowboy Church, uh, Methodist, uh, Presbyterian. I don't care where you, what your label is, or where you go to church. the The body of Christ has to wake up right now. My mandate from the Lord when I started Christians Engage back at the end of 2019 was this: Romans 13:11 says, "Now it is high time." For us to awake out of sleep. Now it is high time. How many of y'all believe it's high time to wake out of sleep? Well, that means that we all need to lay down some of our differences and we need to come together. We're coming together, though, around Jesus, though. I want to make this distinction. We are a ministry, we're a discipleship ministry. We run with a doctrinal statement, a basic Christian doctrinal statement. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We believe that Jesus is God. We believe that every church member and every person that loves God should share the gospel. We believe um, that the local church is the answer to the world. Um, We are all about community. We are all about the body of Christ. We love the church. We are a parachurch ministry. So I want to make that distinction. We're not a political movement. Going back to the church, we operate as a ministry and we are a church movement, okay? With that in mind, it's time for ministry leaders and government leaders across denominational lines who love Jesus and who have a voice and a message for this hour to come together, lay down all of our differences in the fact of how we pray, how we worship. You know, do you raise your hands? Do you like fast songs? Do you like modern worship? Do you like old hymns? Um, how do we, can we lay some of these things down for the purposes of coming together and hearing from people that we would never normally hear from in our churches, um, but also join together because America is worth it. The well-being of our nation is worth it. And we have to know each other. One of my favorite, favorite chapters in the Bible is John 17. It's the last a high priestly prayer of Jesus before he went to the cross. Um, I wrote a book called John 17, um, God's Heart and Desire for Us, His Heart Cry for Us. And we really see Jesus's prayer to the Father that we would be one as he, as he and the Father are one, right? That we would have be one like the Godhead is one. I mean, can you imagine the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? They're all one, but they're different. They're not the same. So what I want to say here is oneness does not mean that we are the same. It's not sameness. It's not. Um, So we can come together in one accord like the people in the day of Pentecost um, and lay down some of our differences uh, around our denominations and come together for the sake of the kingdom, the sake of the gospel, 
and for the sake of America, because we have a lot to do. We have a lot of praying, voting, and engaging to do together. That is why this national conference was born. I don't think there's anything like it in the country where you have government leaders and ministry leaders across denominational lines coming together. So let me just run through this. September 23rd and 24th in Dallas-Fort Worth, we will be in Rowlett, Texas. Last year, we were in Garland and Church in the City. Um, uh, Ryan Hankins, Pastor Ryan Hankins and Larry Trailer uh, came to our conference last year, and they were so touched by it that they offered to pretty much let us have their whole facility for literally nothing. I mean, we're... Bl- Bless this church. They are. We are literally paying their their cleaning and their utility bills. It's an amazing um, partnership, and the whole conference Friday night, our breakout session Saturday morning, our VIP reception with Eric Metaxas on Friday night, our luncheon with Congressman Cloud and our government leaders, um, and our and our Saturday afternoon session will all be at the same church. This is amazing. We're not going to have to move venues. It's going to be awesome. So let me walk through this with you. We start Friday night with a VIP reception for those of you who want to get VIP tickets. Um, The whole conference, guys, is so affordable. It's only $55 for the entire thing. And you get Friday night two two meetings on Saturday that are all going to be like three hours long and the breakout sessions for just $55, okay? Okay. You can go have lunch somewhere there in Rowlett and come back, or you can join us and buy an additional lunch ticket that will be headlined by Congressman Michael Cloud, who's an amazing uh, man of God. Oral Roberts University graduate, was a former associate pastor and media director at his church before he ran for Congress in 2018. Michael's on our advisory board, and he will be headlining that lunch with um, our railroad commissioner, Wayne Christian, Chip Roy. Uh, Judge Wayne Max, Senator Bob Hall, so many um, state representative Matt Schaefer will all be at that lunch um, to bless your socks off. So you don't want to miss that. But you can buy that upgrade. I think it's $40 more, so $95 for the conference with the lunch. Or you can get a VIP ticket, which means you get preferred seating in the front, the entire conference, um, and you get a special VIP reception with Eric Metaxas on Friday night. Let me lay this out to you. That starts at 545. We're going to have signed books for everybody that gets a VIP ticket. So Eric's giving, um, we are getting all of his new book. I am so excited. His new book is coming out that week of our conference. His new book is called Letter to the American Church. Kind of sounds like a Polly and a Pizzle, doesn't it? Um, Letters to the American Church. I can only imagine what Eric's going to say in this book. But we're going to have um, those signed for the people coming to the VIP rece- reception, and you'll get a photo with Eric Metaxas at that. We'll have um, some light hors d'oeuvres. Um, we'll have some drinks in there, no alcohol, but we'll have non-alcoholic beverages. And you'll get to meet and greet with Eric and hang out for about about an hour till 6.45. And then you'll be able to grab your preferred seating. So it's a really cool package. Uh, get the VIP package for $200 a ticket. Again, that includes the VIP um, reception with Eric Metaxas, his book signed, and the lunch and the rest of the conference. So it's amazing. Um, then we're going to start Friday night. Friday night's going to be jam-packed. Um, Church in the City, Pastor Ryan Hankins will be talking at the beginning um, Roselle Cloud is going to do our pledge to the U.S. Um, Judge um, George Flint is going to do our Texas pledge. We're going to have the national anthem. And then Raphael Cruz on our advisory board. I've been so privileged to have Raphael tag team preaching with me around the state of Texas. And we went to Pennsylvania this year. Raphael is going to open us up. He is like, uh, you know, you can't get any more energetic than this 80-year-old man that is going (laughs) to, like, speak at the beginning. Um, And then Clayton Brooks and his amazing team who led worship for us last year is going to lead us in some songs that we all know, some hymns, some different worship songs. Um, So we're mixing worship and prayer within this conference, which is so unique. It's not just speakers. It's prayer. It's worship. It's education and inspiration. Um, And then 
Will Ford and Matt Lockett. Some of you might know them. Some of you might not. They're from the prayer movement. Um, Will's African-American. He has been traveling the country for at least over a decade with this amazing kettle that he got from his ancestors. During the slave years, his ancestors would pray into this kettle and they would muffle their prayers. They would literally bury it in the ground and muffle the prayers um, so that the, their owners, the slave owners, would not uh, hear their prayers, okay? And Will's message has been to America, intercession never dies. The prayers that we pray right now for our nation never dies. And God heard those prayers of freedom, and he brought freedom to Will's ancestors. Um, several years ago, um, about I think over a decade ago still, he met a, a white friend named Matt Lockett. Matt and him met at a Martin Luther King um, memorial in Washington, D.C. with a man named Lou Engel, um, who started the call. And they became dear friends. Matt leads Bound for Life in where they put these tape that says life. And they've been standing in front of the Supreme Court praying for years and years and years, years and years and years. And he also runs the Justice House of Prayer in Washington, D.C. So Matt and Will are both going to be with us. They found out over a decade into their friendship, (laughs) Matt's family that owned Lockett Farm, where Will's kettle came from, was actually, Matt Lockett's family actually owned Will Ford's family. Okay, that you can't get any crazier than that. And so they have this amazing story and this uh, reconciliation of the races story, which is so biblical. It's not CRT, it's biblical, and it's how we should be approaching the family of God. And I want you to hear this story on stage uh, by Will and Matt Lockett. Um, Michael Landon Jr. is now producing a whole movie on their book, The Dream King. Um, and you can go back. That was one of our book club selections. Um, last year, you can go listen to my interview with Will, but ah, uh, so, so awesome. And then I will be speaking. You, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to be speaking on, but it's going to be awesome. I'll be speaking, and then we'll have our final headliner, Eric Metaxas. And if you've not heard Eric, he wrote Bonhoeffer. He wrote Martin Luther. He wrote If You Can Keep It. He wrote one of my favorite books, Amazing Grace, that we'll be doing in our book club coming up um, in September. Um, the story of William Wilberforce. He he wrote um, Fish Out of Water. If you know, is atheism dead? So many books, so many books. Uh, he is my favorite author, and he is funny. Radio host on Salem Communications um, has his own TV show on on TBN as well. You do not want to miss Eric Metaxas. So Friday night alone is worth fifty five bucks. Okay. Now, Saturday morning at 8.30, we're going to have breakouts. These are going to be intimate, um, off-the-record moments where you're going to be able to hang out for 45 minutes with some of our board members, our elected officials, and people that relate to us on these topics. And the main focus of the breakouts is we want you to drill into what is God calling you to do? Where is your place? Now, we talk all the time about Nehemiah. Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. And he did that because he put people and families and communities to replace their place of the wall. It's not our responsibility to solve every problem in America, okay? But it is our responsibility to be obedient to what God's called us to. So we want you to think about what are you praying about? What are the burdens of your heart? What are the things that concern you? What is things that you could get better educated on? Okay. Here are the topics. Influencing your federal government. Um, Congressman Michael Cloud and Roselle Cloud and Susan Wright and B.B. Yola, who's Senator Cruz's cousin, will be facilitating that. Impacting your state government with Pastor Marty Reed, Judge George Flint, Jason Ross, uh, facilitated by Eugene Ralph on our board. Being salt and light in your city and county. Judge Wayne Mack, uh, uh, Scott Jones, Lauren McDougall, um, and Jamie McCain. Breaking down racial and denominational walls in the church. This is going to be Will Ford, uh, Doug and Lisa Springer, and Ben Quine. 
uh, kingdom life, political activism, and spiritual mission together. How do we do political activism and spiritual mission together? I will be doing that one with Elizabeth Johnston, Jason Evans from Time to Revive, and Andrew Tome, our Pennsylvania chairman. Engaging with the pro-life movement, Matt Lockett, Lewis Hogan, Marnie Freeman, uh, facilitated by Kim Weinblood on our board. Speaking the Truth, American Freedom for Pastors and Churches. We're going to have First Liberty. We're going to have Raphael Cruz, uh, Pastor David Halverson, facilitated by our board member, Scott Bauer. Most of these people are our board members or um, you know, key partners that we have in this movement. Um, and lastly is Intercessions for Government. If you're an intercessor, you want to learn more about intercessory prayer for government, Dave and Chris Kubal from Intercessors for America will be with us. Um, Heather Stoner on our board, uh, Sam Bistrian and Dorothy Brooks all from our board. So this is a place where you can interact with our board of directors and drill down on what you really, really want to focus on and how you can be better in these spaces. And eventually Christians Engage will have video curriculum on all these things. Um, after that, um, you'll have just a little bit of a break, and then we're going to have our extended worship on Saturday morning. So all you people that complained to me last year that we didn't worship enough, I want you to come and hang out as Clayton Brooks and Friends leads us in about 30 minutes of worship, followed by a headline speech by Doug uh, Springer. Doug is on our advisory board. He leads an amazing ministry called Somebody Cares International. They're a humanitarian ministry. Doug started out oh gosh, 30 years ago or so as an evangelist trying to meet the needs of people in his city in Houston, Texas, and now his ministry has gone around the world. Doug has written some amazing books on leadership, and we also studied his book, Mending the Net, which is about the body of Christ coming together in a community and city and trying to find everybody's strengths and talents and working together for the betterment of the, our, your community. Um, Doug's going to be speaking on that. It is a powerful message that we all need to hear in this hour, and you want to make sure you hear Doug Springer. Um, and then after that, gosh, it's like nonstop. What is after that? Chris and Dave Cabal from Intercessors for America will be talking about prayer and action. Um, you don't want to miss them. I know that Dave's got an amazing message there. Then we're doing a pastor's panel. Um, ben Quine, who's our theologian in chief <laughs> for Christians Engaged on our board of directors, will be leading an amazing pastors panel with Eugene Ralph, Pastor Casson Huddleston from Rowlett, Pastor Jorge Tovar, Pastor Marty Reed, Pastor Larry Trailer. So across ethnic and denominational lines, it's going to be a powerful um, pastors panel as we talk about courageous pastors. Um, and then we're going to have a headline speech by Elizabeth Johnston. If you've never heard Elizabeth Johnston, this woman, her title on social media is Activist Mommy. I mean, this woman is fearless, fearless, guys. She uh, has 10 children that she homeschools. She went out in her backyard years ago and uh, burned a Teen Vogue magazine because um, they were teaching kids how to do things in Teen Vogue that they shouldn't be doing. I will not go into the details on that. But let's just say she led a boycott that put the printed version of Teen Vogue out of business. Um, she also led a solemn assembly in New York a day of mourning um, when New York made it legal to abort a baby even to the day of birth. Um, she led that solemn assembly where thousands of people gathered in New York dressed in black and prayed and worshipped over the state of New York. Um, she has done so much on the spiritual renewal and revival and intimacy with Jesus. Elizabeth's like my sister from another mother. So you don't want to miss Elizabeth. I mean, she's got it going on and she knows the Lord and it's going to be a powerful headline speech on Saturday morning. So don't miss Elizabeth. Then the luncheon buffet, like I talked about, we're going to have Mexican food. Um, Congressman Michael Cloud will headline that. All of our government officials that are going to be at our conference will be there and will be speaking at the luncheon. And we'll also have Jason Evans from Time to Revive who goes on the road with us talking about the gospel. Um, you don't want to miss that lunch. It's going to be a really powerful thing. And it's another way you can support Christians Engage and support this conference. Um, and then Saturday afternoon is going to be just power packed. 
Saturday afternoon, um, we are starting with our railroad commissioner, Wayne Christian. If you don't know Wayne Christian, he's very charismatic, and you'll just love him. He was a he's a Baptist from East Texas. Um, Wayne was in a Southern Gospel, um, you know, music group, and he is our railroad commissioner, statewide elected official in Texas. Um, he dealing with energy and all the issues that the railroad commissioner does. Um, you can go back and listen to my podcast with Christy Craddock on what the role of the railroad commissioner is in Texas. But Wayne's going to speak. Congressman Chip Roy will be speaking. Congressman Michael Cloud will be speaking. Um, and then we are going to do a government panel with all of them. Matt Schaefer, our state representative from Tyler on our advisory board, will be leading that panel with Chip Roy, Michael Cloud, Wayne Christian, Judge Wayne Mack, who's a Justice of the Peace local official in Montgomery County on our advisory board, and State Senator Bob Hall, who's been fearless conservative leader in the Texas Senate. Um, that's going to be a powerful panel. And then we're going to have a panel with young leaders. I am so excited to be emceeing this panel with some of my dearest young leader friends. Um, Audrey Sol Yola, who is um, Cinder Cruz's niece, will be with us. She is a powerful young leader in government and politics. Um, Cameron Green will be with us. I think Cameron is 17 or 18 years old. She is the daughter of Rick Green of Patriot Academy and Biblical Citizenship. Uh, Man, Cameron is fearless. You want to meet Cameron. Madison Freeman is the daughter of Kevin and Marnie Freeman on our advisory board. Kevin's on uh, the Blaze TV, has a show called Economic War Room. Madison works for Tuvu and other causes. Um, she is amazing. That woman is amazing. And then Manfred and Jonah Went. Manfred want, r- runs Young Conservatives of Texas and his brother, twin brother, Jonah, Works for Congressman Chip Roy in Washington, D.C. as his legislative assistant um, and correspondent. You want to meet Jonah and Manfred. They are powerful in their early 20s. And then Eugene Ralph Jr. Mm. Do, do I know a more articulate young person than Eugene Ralph Jr.? Probably not. Um, the, the man can dissect anything. And so you want to hear them. Then we're going to do a panel on how to pray through the news. It's going to be Dave and Chris Kubal from Intercessors for America, John Zamirek from The Stream. I love The Stream. I write for The Stream. Um, so excited that John is joining us as a Catholic believer, um, just bold, 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 and Dr. Mark Thurman um, from Denison Forum. So Dr. Jim Denison can't join us, but Dr. Mark Thurman will be joining us, and we're going to talk through... You know, how do we pray through the news? How do we get good news sources? And then we are going to worship some more, pray some more, and we're going to end with Dr. Robert Jeffers um, from First Baptist Dallas, who has not been afraid to stay biblical and talk about politics, talk about government, but to stay biblical in every way. Um, And, you know, though we might not agree on everything with all of our speakers, um, we we find our common ground, and we are just so thankful. Dr. Jeffers um, has talked about our case with the IRS and is, has been very public on, on that. We were very, very thankful for him. So he is coming, um, and then we will have a time of final prayers over our nation with some of our leaders, and it's going to be a powerful time. So join us for the Wake Up Conference, guys. Join us September 23rd and 24th. If you haven't been sold now that you need to come, um, come to this amazing conference. Grab your tickets today. Don't wait. um, And join us September 23rd and 24th. And we will see you there. Okay? Go to thececonference.org, thececonference.org, or go to christiansengage.org. It's on our homepage and our events page. Either way, you have no excuse. Come to the Wake Up Conference, okay? Anyway, and then join us in Pennsylvania, Rick Green from Patriot Academy, um, Billy Hollowell will, um, will be with us, Jason Evans from Time to Revive, we'll have someone from First Liberty there, I will be speaking, Andrew Tome will be speaking, we have State Representative Stephanie Borowitz from Pennsylvania will be there, and many, many other leaders. So join us for that. 
Um, it's a one day event. Uh, well, it's Friday night and all day Saturday again, but it's um, a lot cheaper for that. It's thirty dollars for that conference. So come to the Pennsylvania conference as well. Okay, so we'll see you guys there. Blessings. See you at the Wake Up Conference, September 23rd and 24th. Bye-bye. <laughs>